What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with a different kind of SketchUp tutorial for you today. So in today's video I wanted to talk through how you can pick a computer for both 3D modeling and also real-time rendering. So I get a lot of questions about picking computers and I wanted to make something where I could talk you through where you can find the information that you need um, in order to make a decision. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this video is sponsored by MSI and more specifically the MSI WS66 workstation. So MSI has been a leader in the gaming space for years and they now provide workstations for content creators and 3D professionals as well. So um, the MSI WS66 is my second MSI laptop. So I also had the MSI GS65 as well. So I've been using MSI laptops for a while. I love the portability that they bring as well as the ability to do things like virtual reality, other things like that on the go. What I really like about these workstations is they're really designed to provide maximum performance while still being portable. So this laptop has a 15.6 inch touchscreen, an i9-11900H CPU, and an NVIDIA Quadro RTX A3000 GPU, all packed into a 4.63 pound, 0.71 inch thick chassis. Note that you can also get a version with an upgraded A5000 graphics card as well. So what it does is it's really portable and it allows me to take this with me on the go, but I can still run the higher end programs like the D5s and the Lumions and other things like that. Wireless capacity has been upgraded to Wi-Fi 6E, meaning you can enjoy a great wireless experience on the recently opened 6 gigahertz band. So they've also included a 99.9 .9 watt hour battery inside the unit, which is the largest battery size allowed by the FAA without additional airline approval. So they're really trying to maximize that battery life with this battery. Plus, this computer has ISV certification for many of the top 3D modeling and engineering programs in the world, um, as well as the manufacturers. So that includes uh, companies like Autodesk, Graphisoft, Enscape, and more. So you know you're getting a laptop that's been tested and certified to get the job done in those programs. So I will link to more information about this laptop in the notes down below if you want to learn more. So now, let's talk about what you need to do in order to select a computer for 3D modeling and real-time rendering. All right, so the first thing that's gonna be important is you really wanna make sure that you know what you're going to do with your computer because different kinds of programs and applications have different requirements. So for example, um, you need to know, are you planning on creating 3D models with your computer? Are you planning on rendering them? What kind of rendering program are you planning on using? Um, are you planning on using any kind of virtual reality? Are you going to be hooking a headset up to it or something like that? Each one of those situations is going to have different requirements. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a list of all the possible things that you might do with that computer so that you can make sure that you get the right hardware to support those applications. And so then once you do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna research search the system requirements for each software or thing that you might do with that, that computer. And that's going to be really important because as you look through the system requirements, you want to find the most stringent or the highest hardware requirement of the different programs that you're going to use. And you want to use that in order to select the computer that you're going to buy. And so first things first, where do you find the system requirements pages? Probably the easiest way to find this information is to go into a search engine like Google or whatever your search engine is and just type in something like SketchUp system requirements. So when you do that, that's usually going to pop up a result that tells you exactly what the system requirements are for the program that you're looking at using. And so once you get to the system requirements pages, what you need to do is you need to be able to read the system requirements and understand what they need when it comes to your computer hardware. So most system requirements, the ones that are going to be the most important will break into the following few categories. So the first thing is going to be operating systems, right? So like for example, Enscape only runs on Windows. You can run it on uh, Macs if you have Windows installed via Boot Camp, but overall it's going to be a Windows only system. So that's something you need to pay attention to if you use like a Mac, for example. Um, Mac is usually the best example of where you need to pay a lot of attention to make sure that the program that you're downloading is actually compatible 
with uh, your operating system. So for most 3D modeling applications, the CPU is going to handle the tasks of representing the 3D objects on your screen and allowing you to modify them. So the actual movements and changes that you make is going to be more CPU driven. A more efficient CPU is going to do those calculations more quickly. So in addition, most CPUs also have multiple cores, which break up calculations between the different cores so they can be completed at the same time. Um, they're also much better at tasks requiring interactivity than uh, the graphics cards, which we'll talk about in a minute. Now, I will say that the process of actually working in 3D, like in SketchUp, for example, like drawing lines and moving things and all of that, is usually handled through one core of your CPU. That's a technical limitation, which I don't want to get super far into, but um, I, it really has to do with um, the, the way that you can break up the data for something like that doesn't work the same way as like graphics processing. What I'm really getting at with that is that means that the number of of cores isn't necessarily going to make your actual 3D modeling performance better, though it will if you're doing CPU type rendering stuff. Um, that doesn't mean that the multiple core CPU isn't important. Um, it is really great for like repetitive calculations or working through large amounts of data that doesn't require um, interaction, which is why it's better for rendering times. That being said, um, you are going to see a performance improvement if you get a higher level CPU because it's going to calculate more quickly. So usually CPU and GPU are the areas where I really um, like to see people focus um, their money to get the most bang for their buck. So now I want to talk just a little bit about GPUs. So the GPU is going to be your graphics processing unit or graphics card. Um, basically what that does is that breaks the task up into a bunch of different tasks and works on them all at once. That's why it's really good for like calculating light and other things like that because it's basically a whole bunch of calculations that have to happen at the same time and this is really good at doing that. Um, it doesn't necessarily need or it, it's not necessarily best for things that require a lot of interaction as much as those like brute force calculation things. So your GPU is going to be super important for any kind of real-time rendering software because so many calculations have to happen at once to actually display the lighting and materials and geometry in real time. So GPU is going to be really important for things like Lumion or D5 Render or even like an Enscape or some of the real-time stuff from V-Ray. So GPU is going to be super important for all of those things. So there's actually a great website called Passmark, which we're going to talk about a a little bit more in the future, but it scores graphics cards based on their performance. So several system requirements pages actually reference those scores, um, like Lumion and Twinmotion. So I will link to that page in the notes down below. But other programs like D5 Render are actually doing like ray tracing. So they're actually calculating the bounces of rays of light in real time. So they have very high minimum requirements because you need a really nice graphics card in order to do that properly. So their minimum is like a GTX 1060. So um, your graphics card is also going to be really important if you're going to use a VR headset because they have very high frame rate requirements. The frame rate requirements are going to be something that basically you have to render a frame um, or a certain number of frames every second in order to get smooth movement. So you're going to need a nice graphics card to do that. So um, if you're going to do any of these applications, real-time rendering or virtual reality, pay special attention to meeting the GPU requirements. I usually recommend trying to exceed the minimums if possible to have a good experience. So RAM is going to be something that's going to be moderately important when it comes to your 3D uh, modeling and rendering programs. So most places now are going to recommend a minimum of 16 gigabytes um, for their minimum requirements. So like Lumion, for example, recommends 16 as a minimum. Um, if you try to meet their recommended requirements, then uh, they recommend 32 gigabytes. If you try to meet their high-end requirements, then they're rec recommending 64 gigabytes. So the actual benefit of this really varies between different programs so my recommendation would be start with something that has at least a minimum of 16 but also has the ability to expand it just in case you need to do that so most computers ship with like an extra slot or extra slots um, or you can upgrade the RAM that's inside of your computer it's not really a difficult thing to do um, but out of everything I would say I would probably focus a little bit more on the GPU and the CPU rather than the RAM at least when I'm starting out um, the other thing that's going to be really important is hard drive space. 
So hard drive space is something um, that really, again, varies. So you don't need a massive amount of hard drive space for like SketchUp, for example. You only need like 700 megabytes. But when you start getting into programs like Lumion, for example, that actually ship with um, an asset library inside of them, your uh, hard drive space becomes really important because it's going to keep all of those um, it's going to keep all of those assets on your hard drive and it's going to take up a lot of space. So you need to make sure that you're going to have at least the minimum amount of hard drive space required to install the program. Um, so it's definitely something that's worth checking and again you just need to know what programs you're planning on using when you make this selection. Okay, and so I don't want to dive like ultra, ultra deep into this because this is something that you're just going to have to figure out on a person by person basis. But what I do want to know is if we just take a quick glance, right? I've got requirements up for SketchUp, V-Ray, Inkscape, Twinmotion, D5, and Lumion. And if we just kind of look at some of the general things like SketchUp, um, your, your processor is going to be important. Notice how it doesn't talk too much about your 3D graphics card. That's because um, in a lot of situations, your processor is kind of the bottleneck for the 3D modeling piece. Piece. So it doesn't matter how big of a graphics card you use, um, all of those calculations are having to run through your uh, processor. And so like going out and buying like a, the highest end graphics card is not going to make SketchUp run that much faster because all of that has to go through the processor. That's why the focus is placed here and there's not a ton of focus on saying, hey, get a really nice graphics card. So V-Ray is kind of the same way um, unless you're using V-Ray Vision, which is their real-time rendering solution. Um, your requirements aren't going to be that high because basically what you're doing is you're clicking a button and then it's doing calculations in the background. So if you're just going to do like a SketchUp and V-Ray situation, like yes, nicer hardware will help with your calculations, but where this really starts getting important is when you start getting into the real-time applications. So Inkscape, for example, has fairly low um, requirements when it comes to the minimum, but it does recommend higher um, graphics cards. But notice how the focus starts getting placed on graphics cards as you get into these real-time engines. So this one, for example, like if you're just going to use the minimum, you can get by with a GTX 660, but the recommended is going to be a lot higher. And then notice how it gets substantially higher once you get into virtual reality because of those frame rate requirements for the headsets. So if you are planning on doing virtual reality, do not skimp on your graphics card. You're not going to be happy with your results if you do. But then, I mean, if we jump into twin motion, again, you're going to get the same requirements here where they talk about graphics card, well, where they start talking about graphics card benchmark scores. So those are going to be scores where um, they actually like test um, how well the graphics cards do. So they actually say, hey, we need a graphics card with a score over 10,000 based on this website. So this Passmark website can be really helpful for kind of seeing where your graphics card lies in the overall order of things. So again, like the highest scores are going to be the best graphics cards that do the best, right? So as you scroll down, you start getting into like the GTX 1080 Ti, for example, is what I have on my desktop computer. Um, you start seeing like the GTX 1080 and all of that. But this is going to be a great place for you to go and figure out where the graphics card that you're looking at kind of fits in overall. And so again, Lumion is going to say the same thing, right? For your minimum recommended and high end, they want you to beat this score. So um, just something to kind of pay attention to when you're doing this is this is going to be a great resource for figuring out how good um, your graphics card is. And then some programs like D5 Render won't even run unless you have a minimum of a GTX 1060. So it does a check when you first open up D5 Render to make sure that your graphics card is going to meet those minimum requirements. So again, notice the focus on GPU as you start getting into the real-time rendering tools. So I do want to talk just for a minute about desktops and laptops because they're so fundamentally different. So uh, really what's going to drive the decision between a desktop and a laptop is the portability factor, right? So a desktop computer, for example, just stays in one place. You put it on your desk. That's why it's called the desktop. You don't really move it around all that much. A laptop, on the other hand, can be taken with you wherever you go. And so really what you need to consider here is how much you're going to be moving around with your computer. Um, do you need to be able to take it with you? Um, do you travel a lot? Anything like that? If any of those things are the case, you're probably going to want to go with a laptop. So laptops, though, are just going to be fundamentally different. You have to pack a lot of hardware into a smaller space to try to get the same performance. And so because of that, um, you're going to need more sophisticated components because they have to be smaller as well 
as uh, different heat management systems. So a lot of the time you are going to see a little bit of a price premium to go with a laptop as opposed to a desktop. Plus with a desktop, usually you're going to be able to get the highest end components. Um, not that laptops are low end components, but they, they just have more space and so they can fit more stuff into them. So like the super, super, super high end stuff is probably going to be more of a desktop thing, though there are laptops that have fantastic performance when it comes to 3D modeling spaces. So I get the question a lot, what am I using? So what is my hardware? So I am currently using a desktop computer from CyberPower. Um, they're a gaming company and I don't think the one that I'm using is sold anymore, though I can link to some computers from them. Um, and mine has the i7 8700K CPU um, as well as 16 gigabytes of RAM. So the graphics card is an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti. So I've had uh, nothing but a great experience with that graphics card. So um, that's working pretty well. I don't know if I'm going to replace this anytime soon because I'm still getting really great performance out of it. But that runs Lumion. It runs D5. It runs a little bit of everything. I may upgrade just to get some of that new um, RTX stuff that's uh, in some of the newer NVIDIA cards. But for right now, I'm having a really great performance with that. So for my laptop, I was using an MSI GS65 Stealth for a while, um, the super slim gaming laptop from MSI. So I have just recently upgraded to the MSI WS66. So I'm liking the laptops from MSI right now. Um, this one has the um, Intel i9 um, 11900H processor in it, as well as the NVIDIA RTX A3000 laptop GPU with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So um, this laptop is something I'm gonna do a little bit more in depth, talk about a little bit later on. So we'll do some benchmarking, checking out the performance with various programs and other things like that. But I, I really like the low profile of it and the fact that it's still got that graphics card that can run some of those high-end programs like the Lumions and the um, and the D5s of the world. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. Hopefully it gave you some helpful info for where you can find the information that you need and some of the things that you can do in order to look into different computers. Um, so if you have any questions down below, let me know. Please do not ask me, hey, will this computer work for this program? I just can't go through them. You need to read the system requirements and then make that decision for yourself. But if you do have anything any questions about anything that we talked about, I'm definitely happy to do that. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.